Hey everyone, Daniel Marchena here with my latest video on how to set up Android Wear for iOS. So I've got my Moto 360 here. Now my Moto 360 is running the latest version of Android Wear. Now this is essential for you to be able to use uh, iOS and Android Wear. Another thing you want to make sure to do is you need to factory reset your watch before you pair it to your phone, the same way as if you were pairing your watch to a brand new Android phone. So make sure you're factory reset and you're running Android Wear 1.3. Now on your iPhone, there are a list of de Apple devices that Google says this will work on. I have that in the description. Uh, but I have an iPhone 6 here that is running iOS 9, uh, the newest beta that's out right now. Um, but it will work on any iOS version 8.2 8 or greater on the supported devices. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download the Android Wear app for iOS. And I have that link in the description. After you open the app, you're granted with the screen, have a watch, let's get started. So on your Moto 360 or Android Wear device, you'll go ahead and swipe from the setup screen, choose your country. On the Moto 360, you have to agree to the privacy policy, and you'll see it immediately pop up over here on the, three, the uh, iPhone 6. So I'll go ahead and select my Moto 360. So now the Moto 360 and the iPhone are pairing. Now this is something a little bit different with the Android Wear on iOS. You need to punch in the Bluetooth pairing request code. Uh, and Android, it just syncs over without any question. Uh, so let me go ahead and put that in. And now the two devices are pairing. And you will get that screen saying that you need to plug into a, a wall outlet in order to get them paired on your Android Wear. If you don't do anything on that screen, you're perfectly fine. They'll still set up and pair without having to plug it in. So you're good to do it without a charger. So now they're going to go ahead and update. I'll fast forward to when they're finished up. All right, so it looks like my Moto 360 has finished setting up and Android Wear is ready to continue. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is in the initial setup, you may get a few more setup screens on your iPhone asking you for Bluetooth sharing, access to notifications and such. Uh, because I've already had Android Wear installed, those uh, options didn't appear for me. But just make sure you click Next because it does need that access in order to connect to your Android Wear wearable. Uh, so now that they're set up, we're going to go ahead and Put the uh, Moto 360 back on. You'll see we're at the tutorial screen. And you've got the finish setting up your watch screen. And here's one of the warning screens I was telling you about, making sure that you turn on watch notifications in order to not get duplicate notifications and, and have issues there. So you're just going to go ahead and enable those. If you'd like to have location access, you can enable that. And again, if you'd like to have calendar access, you can go ahead and enable that as well. Uh, so now that we're paired, you'll see you have a similar gear setting. Uh, a few things are changed. Uh, on one of them, you'll probably see some different options depending on your Android Wear watch. But on the Moto 360, you've got always on screen as opposed to ambient mode. So that's a little bit different. Now, the menu in the Moto 360 still shows ambient mode in its settings. Uh, so on iOS, it's just worded a little bit differently. So you can go ahead and set those up. You can block app notifications just like you do on Android. So if you have an application on your iPhone that you don't want coming to your wrist, you can go ahead and block it here and you'll still get notification through your iOS device. Uh, voice search also works very similarly to the way that it did on Android. So that's a good thing to have uh, on your watch as well. So now let's take a look at the watch faces that we've got here on Android Wear. Uh, you'll notice that there is a very small selection, basically what your OEM put on your Android Wear device. It's going to be different for LG, for Motorola, for Sony. Everyone's going to have some slightly different watch face options. Now we hope Google will be allowing more watch faces that are on Android to iOS, but they do have a workaround in place right now. You'll notice that you have the Get More Watch Faces option. Once you click that, it'll load up a web page. And I'm not entirely sure on how Google's doing this, but you do actually have an option to install some of the major watch faces that you did have on Android on your iOS device. Uh, one of my favorites is the US2 watch faces. So I can go ahead and choose to install that. And while that's downloading, that can download in the background and uh, you'll have those watch faces available. Now, like I said, a lot of watch faces aren't available like Watchmaker and things. So just keep that in mind that that is a little bit of a downside to using it on iOS, but we knew there were going to be some things you were gonna be giving up. All right, so you notice I just sent myself a notification or a text message from another phone. You can ignore that number, it's just a throwaway number. But you'll notice that the notification came through both on my watch and my phone. 
uh, and it notifies me that I've got a text message. Now, like a lot of other notifications on Android Wave for iOS, you can't act on those notifications. All you can really do is block them. Um, now, there are a few exceptions, such as Gmail and a few of Google's applications, so I expect Hangouts and things to get full support as well in the future, but right now it is very limited support. Now another neat feature that you'll see here as well is when you get the message on your lock screen for your iPhone, uh, if you dismiss the notification from your Android Wear device, the notification will also be dismissed from the iPhone. So we can see here that the US2 watch face is just finished downloading and installed to the device. So if we go ahead and open the Android Wear app, I've turned off card previews because I typically don't use them, and go into the watch faces, you'll see that the US2 watch face pack is available for you to choose from. So that's really cool to have. It gives you a, a couple of different watch faces. Unfortunately, it's not the wide variety that you have on Android, um, but it is widely the same for applying them. So if we go ahead and apply this watch face, you'll notice it goes ahead and changes right away. Um, now one thing that I do notice is that the interactive watch faces is not enabled on the iOS version. So maybe that's something Google will be enabling in a future update. You still have to go through and manually change the colors uh, or the settings that are enabled by using the settings on the Android Wear device because there are no settings that you can change on the iOS device. You go ahead and change that color there. So another thing a lot of people really like to do with their Android Wear devices is control music. And fortunately, uh, you do have that ability on your iOS device paired with Android Wear. There are a few little caveats though. So I'll go ahead and open up Google Play Music. And uh, so you see I'm playing some Foo Fighters here and uh, the notification does come up on the Android Wear device. Now no uh, album art transfers. Now this applies for everything I've tested so far. I've tested YouTube, Google Play Music, and um, Apple Music, and none of them transfer the album art. Again, we figured this is just a, uh, a characteristic of iOS, not enabling that to be transferred, but you do have uh, full playback controls as well through Apple Music, Google Play Music, and it also worked for me on YouTube. Uh, so some other cool features is you do have your forward and back track options. So if you wanted to go ahead and change the track, and you can also control the volume of the, uh, the music as well. Of course, for copyright reasons, I won't play any of the music, but you can see the volume was attempting to change there as well. So that's a nice little feature to have, and uh, you know, it's something that you're not really losing out on when you switch to iOS with Android Wear. So one final thing we're gonna test here today is a phone call coming through the iOS device. So you'll see that the iPhone does ring. Again, this is a throwaway number, so I'm not gonna bother masking it. You do have the options of dismiss or answer the phone call. And if you go ahead and dismiss the call, the call does dismiss on your iPhone and you still do get a missed notification on your watch. So you notice here, I've got another phone call coming in and you have the option of answering the call. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that over. And you'll see that the call is answered now as well. Now the speakerphone doesn't automatically turn on like it does on Android, uh, but it is a nice feature to have to be able to answer calls from your watch. So there's a good overview on Android Wear for iOS. You'll see a lot of features are retained, but unfortunately we lost some of the power user benefits of using Android Wear mated to an Android phone. But Android Wear mated to an iOS phone is still a very acceptable solution if you just want to dismiss notifications, answer phone calls, and control music. So I should have some more videos coming. I've got a Note 5 review and I'll have some initial impressions coming up and a full review coming in about a week. Uh, I'm a new channel, so be sure to share it, like it, and uh, leave comments letting me know what you'd like me to improve on. Again, my name is Daniel Marchena and I hope you have a great day, guys.